Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This video number 20, or it's video 2 in the subsection on electric potential. Specifically, I'm going to discuss what is electric potential, or what is its physical meaning. The previous videos to this which are relevant are number 18, where I discussed the curl of the electric field, which we saw in electrostatics is equal to zero. Video 2, I discussed the electric field. Video 1, I discussed Coulomb's law. In video 19, I introduced the electric potential, the results of which I've written on the top right of your screen. Now, it's important to note here, or to realize here, that we use the electric potential in video 19 as a mathematical convenience in order for us to calculate the electric field. We didn't associate it with any particular physical quantity. And I'm going to show you by the end of this video that in actual fact, the electric potential is the electric potential energy per unit charge. So we see that the electric field is minus the gradient of a scalar which we call the electric potential and we give it the placeholder V. And it can be calculated by performing this particular integral here. Now just note its functional form and we shall move on. So the first thing for us to do is to calculate the work done by a force. So first of all, the work done, capital W, going from A to B would be the integral of A to B of f dot dl. Or if you want to pick out the components, it's f cos phi dl. So that's the work done by a force. Now where the force is conservative, we may express the force in terms of potential energy. So that's a pretty straightforward thing to do. And we say that the work done going from A to B is simply the, uh, the, the difference of the potential energy at A and the potential energy at B. So we can rearrange this as minus the change in the potential energy. So the work done is minus the change in the potential energy. And the third thing we need to realize is the, or I suppose uh, to refresh upon, is the work energy theorem. This says that if we take the change in kinetic energy, so k sub b minus k sub a, that's the same as the work done going from a to b. So the change in kinetic energy is the work done going from a to b, which we already know is minus the change in the potential energy. So we can rewrite the work energy theorem as the potential and kinetic energies at A added together, of course, and that's equal to the sum of the potential and kinetic energies at B. And that's the work energy theorem. Now, to start applying these, let's imagine, and on, it's, it's drawn on the top right of your screen, that we have two parallel capacitor plates creating a uniform electric field. So on the top we have the positive plate and the bottom we have the negative plate. Note that the electric field is going straight downwards. It's, uh, it's, a very, it's uniform and it's going in the downward direction. So what I'm going to do is place a test charge of Q in the middle. Now of course the electric field is going to apply a force onto this test charge pushing it in a downward direction because this is going to be a positive test charge. Now, so the force is going to be Q times E. Note that the separation between the capacitor plates is D and that the distance from the test charge to the bottom plate is Y. So the work done going from A to B is going to be the force times distance. In this case, it's going to be Q times the electric field times D. Notice, of course, that it is positive. But if we look at the Y component of the electric field, excuse me, y component of the, the, the electric force, it's simply going to be minus the test charge multiplied by the electric field. And we also notice that there is no component in the x or z di di dimension. What this means is that we're dealing with a conservative force in the exact same way as gravity is a conservative force. So if we look at gravity, if we take the y component of the gravitational force, it's equal to minus mg. And if you look at the gravitational potential energy, it's mgy. What we have here is if you look at the y component of the electric force, it's minus the test charge times the electric field. And if you look at the electric potential energy, it's Q times capital E times y, because of course we're moving in the y direction. So we're saying basically that the electric force is conservative in a similar fashion to gravity. So we can rewrite this then finally as saying that the work done going from A to B is the minus the change in potential energy, which is QE outside of YA minus Y at B. And the electric potential energy, of course, is Q 
q times e times y. So to move on, let's consider the electric potential energy of two point charges. So let's say we have a point charge, positive q here, and into its electric field, we put in a test charge, positive q, zero. And we note that we have a position A and we have a position B. So the electric field is going to be radial outwards, but if we put the uh, if we put the test charge in such a way that it's on, you know, it's it's uh, it's on its radius, then we're talking about a linear setup here like this. And the electric field is extending away from the test charge. So the electric force here is going to be very straightforward. It's written on the top right of your screen. It's one over four pi epsilon zero, the product of the charges, r squared, r hat. So next we try and calculate the work done moving the test charge from A to B. So it's going to be the integral from A to B at f dot dr. That once again is going to be the product of the charges divided by 4 pi epsilon 0. But note this time when we do the integral, instead of having an r squared, we simply have uh, well 1 over r minus 1 over r. So we're, we're calculating in 1 over r sub a minus 1 over r sub b. But it's going to be 1 over the radius rather one over, than 1 over the radius squared as we had in the past. So we can rewrite this as saying that the gravity, excuse me, the electric potential energy is 1 over, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, the product of the charges divided by the separation of the distance between the charges. And of course, if we're talking about a continuous charge distribution, we can talk about uh, Q, Q0, which is their test charge over 4 pi epsilon 0, and we have the, the integral of the charge density multiplied by, uh, excuse me, the charge density integrated to tau prime divided by the magnitude of the separation vector. I'm sure you can see where we're going because this looks very similar to something we saw in video number 19, specifically the electric potential. So just to, uh, to I suppose, close it up. So the electric potential can be written as, uh, uh, well, I suppose we're going to talk about the electric potential now, but the electric potential energy can be written like this if you don't want to write it as an integral, but want to write it as a sum. So what if we look at the electric potential energy per unit charge? So what I'm going to do is divide across by the, the test charge itself, which is it's, it's going to be a single, just one, one, one coulomb. So here we have our test charge divided across by a test charge. And what we're left with is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, the integral of the charge density integrated d tau prime over the magnitude of the separation vector. This is exactly what we have defined as the electric potential in video number 19. So we can, I suppose, we can finish up by saying the electric potential is the electric potential energy per unit charge. Okay, so that means if we look at the units on the potential, it's joules per coulomb. Electric potential energy per unit charge. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.